Hey everybody, I am here with Joe and he is the Vice President for um, Windermere uh, Commercial Real Estate. And we're gonna talk a little bit about real estate and what's happening right now um, with the market and what's going on. He's gonna kind of answer some of these questions that I know some of you have. Um, and I know that I'm curious about what's happening. So we'll uh, ask him if you would like to, I guess I introduced you but a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do. Hey, Tabitha, how are you? Thank you for the uh, opportunity. Very great to join you. Um, as you mentioned, my uh, official title is Vice President of Commercial Real Estate for Windermere. And I have been in the commercial real estate business now here based in Northern Idaho for almost 17 years. And uh, prior to that, I was a uh, business person as well as a practicing attorney. Um, so I'm a little bit reformed from my attorney background. But nonetheless, it's nice to have that as a compliment because it does give you a certain attention to detail. So uh, enjoy what I do. I um, tend to focus more on commercial real estate investments that have associated businesses like hotels, restaurants, assisted living, um, all of which, of course, are deeply affected in today's time. Mm -hmm. But um, apartment complexes as well. And, um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure to see the uh, transactions come together. Perfect. So as we know, we are in a very interesting time. It's just a weird time. Things will get back to somewhat of a different normal, but to normal. Um, but things are happening right now and still there's, there's still real estate happening. There's people buying and selling still. Um, let us know what has changed and what are like still some opportunities that are happening right now. Yeah, well, first let me mention that the corresponding states, including Washington, just extended our neighboring state, just extended the, uh, the uh, stay at home until May 4th. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion, but the consensus is that the real estate community is not considered essential services. And so of course, what that means is it doesn't mean that we can't work. It just means that our work has to be done virtually. Mm -hmm. And so that really is not that big of a change for commercial real estate because 80 or 90% of our transactions are done virtually anyway through the exchange of documents, um, leases, financial statements, profit statements, rent rolls, et cetera. So we're accustomed to working um, virtually with the exchange of documents, including any transactions, documents, purchase agreements, and those sorts of things. The thing that has evolved a little bit is the uh, property showings, meaning um, our demand for property showings is a little bit less than a traditional residential demand. But nonetheless, clients do want to see what they're getting into. Uh, and so now we're restricted to being able to do that on a virtual basis. Um, and that's not so, so bad. I mean, you still get a good fiction and everything else. But so the way that we go about doing what we do has uh, uh, evolved a bit. And then the second thing is the impact of the stay at home orders has really caused a lot of the businesses, restaurants, hotels, for example, to have a severe decline. Mm -hmm. And in that decline, of course, then they are not, the owners are not in, um, are not interested in trying to sell their properties because one, they know they can't. And two, lenders of those products aren't supporting them during this time of, of low, low business. And so those products are kind of on hold, um, the ones that are directly impacted. Um, the other products like um, industrial uses, like apartment complexes, they are still active and in high demand. And lenders continue to, to support those products at very low interest rates. Uh, I've been quoted rates as low as three and a half percent. And so they're still active and viable. Uh, and um, the other thing that continues to drive commercial demand is in... Um, tax avoidance or tax deferral opportunities, section 1031 of the US tax code allows commercial uh, uh, owners with proceeds from a sale, let's say a million dollars, for example, if they purchase another commercial asset equal to or greater than a million dollars, then they can shelter, that is defer any taxable uh, consequences on the proceeds that they got coming out of the sale. And so that tax deferral can be quite a, a motivation for uh, uh, buyers with 1031 money. Great. 
Mm -hmm. um, along with that, you and I've talked about this. Um, you're also going to right now is kind of also, you know, I guess switching the gear a little bit and doing some consulting. So you can, you have an opportunity to help people um, understand all this stuff too. I mean, what are you, you know, you're doing a little bit of that too. Could you explain how you can help yeah. someone that is confused yeah. on what to do? Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate the question. I, and um, it, the short of it is, is that we have to change. We have to evolve our business model. And because the transaction side of what I used to do, the buy, representing buyers and sellers, has obviously uh, either um, been put on hold or frozen in some cases, then uh, I'm offering free of charge just overall consulting services on how to uh, plan for, uh, execute and then manage commercial investments okay. because we're all pretty optimistic. I, I, hopefully you share, I, I know you and I share this optimism as well that um, we're going to rebound and our economy, the fundamentals are still very solid and there's going to be a little bit of pent up demand, but there's going to be a real maybe demand surge uh, sort of at the end of this pipeline. And so we may as well get ahead of it and just let's discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's discuss your goals, your plans, what opportunities, budgets you might have to use so that you can be poised and ready to go when we return to um, a little bit of, I'm almost hesitant to say normal, I don't know what normal is going to be, <laughs> but when we return to a sense of where, where we were. Yeah, and I, I agree with that, and I think there's just, it's going to be normal, but it's adapting, and it'll be something different, and it's just who's willing to adapt to that and kind of how things are going to look later. Well, the other thing too is quite frankly, since we have a fair amount of time in our hands, we may as well, let's stay engaged. Let's stay engaged. Let's keep our brains active. And what better time, so to speak, to look for a silver lining and plan the future. Exactly. You know, I'll get my calculator out and you get your calculator out if you need it. And I'll help you put some numbers to your goals and objectives and uh, see if it suits you, but at least you'll be ready to go when, when, when it's time to go. I know actually you and I need to talk. I have some, I have some big ideas too. So <laughs> oh, good well, super, super. I look forward to it. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> um, so before we end, um, what, you know, you're out there, you're, you're offering your services for free pretty much to help someone build mm -hmm. this plan of what they want to do potentially in the near future of investing. Mm -hmm. um, how can the community and people help support you? Well, uh, obviously this is my profession. And so ultimately, my long-term goal is to be able to um, uh, participate in a commissioned uh, transaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our being able to create a partnership is really the mutual assistance. Um, because, of course, it's my profession, and so I, I'm, I'm motivated to get a paycheck. But I, I'm really more motivated to um, help somebody establish uh, their uh, um, investment goals or business goals. I mean, for example, the uh, new owner, Denny, Denny Moray of Radike Restaurant here in the Hayden area, we were lucky in that we just closed the transaction before the coronavirus oh, impacted wow. everything. And he was a renter and he was paying quite a bit more in rent than his uh, now loan payments are as an owner. Uh, and also qualified him because he was an owner for certain federal relief opportunities. Oh, great. And, and, you know, the timing, my gosh, knock on wood, but the timing was just great. And I, I take more um, uh, satisfaction, so to speak, in being able to see his business uh, thrive yeah. um, than the paycheck I got associated with that. I mean, I'm grateful for the paycheck, but on a long-term basis, I mean, he's going to be in the community and continue to offer just great Italian food. Oh my so, gosh, great Italian food. I yeah. stumbled in there one day. I mean, I used, when I used to go there when it was like a sandwich shop. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I went in there and I was like, oh, I'm just going to have lunch with someone. And it was mm -hmm. this like hidden Delicious. secret. Mm -hmm. I was like, everyone needs to try this. This is great. Right. Now, a little bit of a plug. I mean, obviously, I have some loyalty to Danny and his wife, Jen, and their, and their kids. But um, they, they continue to be open for carry out and curbside. And so that same quality food you can still continue to get. But yeah, boy, it, it, it gives me great, great satisfaction to see the restaurant open and them thriving and just being able to sort of meet their dream. Awesome. Well, thank you, Joe, for taking some time to chat with me today. And uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, some more great things from you. Yeah, and I, I look forward to that follow-up phone call from you there, madam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.